Well, good morning. Glad y'all were able to make it in this morning. A little bit blustery and windy out there, although uh, not a ton of snow, but uh, boy, that wind can take your breath away. We do want to uh, start off with thank yous this morning. First of all, thank you so much uh, to those that helped supply the generators and uh, monitor them throughout the day uh, when we didn't have power here at the church. Uh, that was a blessing to the church. So thank you uh, for braving both the cold um, and making sure that we had uh, the, the church still heated up and our freezers going. We also want to say a huge thank you to those that helped with the game dinner last night. Um, if you were here, uh, you know what a blessing that was and how good the food was. Uh, so thank you for all the time and effort that was put into that as well. We also want to uh, let you know that your annual year-end giving statements are available to pick up in the foyer. And again, uh, as one of the pastors here, uh, thank you for giving to the Lord. Um, a lot of times we talk about in terms of giving to the church, but uh, that's slightly inaccurate. First and foremost, you're giving to the Lord, and secondly, you're more so giving through the church um, as we minister to uh, those that God provides here. So thank you um, very much for your giving uh, to the Lord, and uh, consider uh, prayerfully how you give this next year, but also be praying continually for how those funds are used to minister the hearts and lives that God brings uh, through these doors and out into the community. We also want to say a huge thank you uh, to those that serve with projection and the audio. Um, if you notice in your bulletin, there is a computer help needed. Uh, that help uh, specifically is in terms of we do need help uh, with the beautiful projections you see up here this morning. Um, the great thing about serving in those two areas, uh, you still get the full uh, experience of the service and whatnot, uh, but also you do serve a very crucial need within the church um, as you enjoy the audio up here and uh, also the, the projection on screen. So if you are willing to serve in that capacity, it is not a scary thing. I know some of that looks intimidating at times. Um, it, it's really not that bad, but we do need uh, some hands and feet to uh, bless us up there in service uh, to enjoy what you continue to see every Sunday morning up here. They're the same pay, right? What's that? They pay the same? They do pay the same. They do. <laughs> they do pay the same, uh, which is uh, blessings and storing up treasures in heaven. So that's the best place to get paid is uh, storing treasures up in heaven. So yes. <laughs> But thank, can, we, can we just give a round of applause to all those, including worship team? I mean, yeah. Yeah. one of the things that sometimes gets overlooked in church ministry is there are a lot of hands and feet that move behind the scenes, and uh, without them, uh, the experience here uh, would not even be close to what we get to enjoy and take for granted on a regular basis. So, uh, so seriously, um, consider serving that way because uh, it's important roles. And if one of those goes down, um, it's noticed very quickly. So, uh, We also uh, want to let you know is if uh, hopefully it saved some room if you were here for the uh, game dinner last night. Because today, uh, following the second service, we encourage you to come on back. Uh, no better day for it, as uh, cool as it is outside. Uh, there's a soup and salad uh, fundraiser for the Academy. Uh, and uh, again, that's uh, just a great time of fellowship out there and good food. And it also helps support our Academy. So consider coming back for that uh, after the second service. Uh, the Secret Sister uh, Blessings has uh, made a comeback, and so there are forms to fill out. If you are a lady in the church and would like to be involved in that, uh, consider uh, filling out a form and getting it back here by January 21st. Uh, and then I guess the names are going to be released, uh, who your secret sister is on January 28th. And so that's just a lot of fun, and you get to know some other ladies within the church uh, for women that would like to take, uh, take advantage of that. Uh, there's going to be a deaconess meeting uh, next Sunday at 7 in the evening, and uh, we encourage the deacons to come out for that, deaconesses. Uh, the annual meeting, we want to encourage you to mark your calendar. Uh, lots of big decisions going on. It's going to be on Sunday, January 28th at 6 in the evening. So uh, consider coming out. It's not generally a long meeting, uh, but you're part of the church, so come on out. And even if you're not a member, you're welcome to be there uh, and kind of hear what's going on. But uh, being part of a church, and more importantly, being part of a church family, one of the blessings that we have is we get the privilege to come together as a body of Christ and worship our Lord. So, uh, so won't you do this, that this morning? Good morning. Why don't you stand up and worship our God, our Savior? <clears throat> God. 
God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He pardoned the raging sea. My God, He holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. And he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy Shout out your praise. Oh, we shout out your praise. The beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord.
thank you so much for bringing us into your house on, on such a day as this, for, for bringing us here together to worship you, to worship your name. And to have a God like you, how can we not worship you? We thank you so much for being in control of this of this world, this world that uh, is so against us. We know that everything works out to be within your will. God, please just remind us of that each day, each day as we live, each day as we, we go into work. You know, you tell us to be your witnesses. You tell us to be uh, your examples, to follow what your son Jesus uh, has told us to do. Father, please remind us of that every day. God, we just, we thank you for adopting us into your, into your family and for making the same promises uh, that you gave Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Those same promises are for us now. We thank you, God. We just ask that your, your blessing be upon us, that the words uh, that Pastor Dan has, has prepared for us this morning to be your words, Father, and we thank you for giving them to him. And in everything, Lord, we thank you again. In your name, Father, amen. morning we are in uh, first Peter as we continue the series of the 40 days of prayer with the Christian Missionary Alliance in first Peter chapter 2 and starting with verse 9 but you are a chosen people a royal priesthood a holy nation a people belonging to God that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against your soul. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day he visit, visits us. So last night we had our, uh, our annual game dinner. We had a speaker, his name is Eric Bell. He brought a very good message on the gospel. And uh, as you know, we have cards that people fill out. And uh, this might sound unbelievable, but uh, as I was in the office with Eric, I started going through those cards, those slips of paper. And uh, I saw a couple kids that made a decision for Jesus last night. I said, well, that's great. Then the pile started getting larger and larger, not just with kids, but adults that made a decision for Jesus Christ. And um, I'm going to ask Gary to come up to help me because um, I don't know if I can make the switch with uh, the back switch of all these candles. But there were 16 responses of receiving Jesus Christ as their Lord. 16! I was thinking, all right, we're going to get to that 153, maybe, huh? Uh, in one month, there's 16. So 16 coming to faith in Jesus Christ. Oh, my goodness. Whoops. Let your light shine. There, there says. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Gary's beating me. I am. Here, I'll, I'll help you out. 
<laughs> well, that light is shining, but you just don't see it. So 16 of them. And there was, uh, I think there was six responses that rededicated their lives to the Lord. And then, of course, it's just, it's just an amazing thing to think of all these ones that made a decision for Jesus. I'm pretty excited, if you can't tell. I think you are. So I think we might reach that. Go ahead, Gary. Mess with this one one more time. Maybe I'm supposed to hold it through the whole message. Hey. Don't let Satan blow it out. Hey, there you go. <laughs> we better pray. Our hearts go out to the Chase family as they have had a loved one pass away this week, and uh, we want to be in prayer for them. And uh, there's just others that are in great need of prayer during this time, prayer for healing and a touch upon their bodies. We want to pray for these ones that made a decision for Jesus. And, uh, and uh, we, just, we just praise God for his work upon people's hearts. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father God, we rejoice in this day with your angels, Lord, even. Uh, rejoicing last night they were, Lord, of these ones that have decided to follow Jesus. Lord, uh, perhaps for the first time, Lord, that they made that decision. They checked the box that they, re they received Christ uh, last night, Lord, and we are so excited about that. And uh, we just ask God that you would help us to be able to come alongside and um, bring encouragement and discipleship, Lord, to these new ones, Lord, in the faith. And uh, may you, Lord, work upon their hearts, Lord, as they continue to grow in you, Father. May they always know, Lord, that you are there for them, and uh, even, Lord, when temptation comes around them, Lord, that they will stand their ground, that they are a believer in Jesus Christ, and, Lord, not give in to those temptations. And, Father, we are thankful, Lord, for your hand upon people that are experiencing your healing touch upon their bodies. And we continue to pray for loved ones in our church family as a whole, Lord, that are recovering from various surgeries. And Father, we just ask that you would meet these uh, different needs that are out there. There's many, and I just pray for your healing touch upon these ones, Lord, that are dear to our hearts. We also thank you, Lord, for how you blessed um, the message that Eric brought last night, um, not just about salvation, but Lord, about living for you and being all out for Christ. And Lord, you're the one that's made us complete uh, through your son, Jesus Christ. And wherever Eric is serving today, Father, we just pray that you will bless him. I know he's going into a season of... Uh, going to churches and sharing, Lord, the things that uh, he experienced on the field there in Africa. And we just pray that you will give him the unction and spirit as you gave him last night. May he share openly, especially the plan of salvation and also, Lord, the call to ministry. And uh, we just ask that you'll bless him on this day, Lord. We also would pray, Lord, for um, our upcoming meetings that we have as a church body. Lord, our annual meeting. And Lord, we ask that you give us direction and um, help us, Lord, to be faithful in our giving and be good stewards with that which you have given us. Lord, certainly we will lay out a budget, a plan that we, we feel, Lord, you're leading us to be responsible over. And Father, um, in man's eyes, we can't do it. But Lord, in your heart and in your view, we can. And Lord, that as you use us, I pray, Lord, that we will see much fruit, fruit that will last for your kingdom's sake. And so, Lord God, we commit um, a budget that's coming soon to this body the membership here, and Lord, we commit it to you. We just ask God that you would give us direction 
We pray for our daycare ministries and we pray for the academy. Lord, help us to uh, work together as a church, Lord. It's all part of our ministries here. And Lord, we want to do it for your glory, Lord. We want to see young people come to faith in Christ. And Lord, that they will grow not only in their spiritual, and nurture them in their spiritual life, but Lord, also uh, academically, Lord, uh, in the pursuit of uh, more knowledge and education. We ask God that you would guide and direct each student, Lord, with the academy and the daycare. Father, we continue to pray for a teacher for fifth grade class. We know, Lord, that you have somebody that is that you're working on um, to serve in that capacity at the academy. So, Lord, would you guide and direct us in that realm? Lord, thank you again for allowing us to give, Lord, of that which you have provided for us to be good stewards of. We ask your blessing upon the offering this morning. May it be used for your kingdom's sake. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand with me and let us uh, greet one another in the Lord today. Weird. Why would it? I can hold it. It stays. Where's that candle, right? Where's the candle? Oh, 16. Oh, extra. Thank you. All right. Please remain standing. We're going to sing uh, hymn number 344. Uh, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. 344.
Um, this morning for special music, we have Kylie and Ariana to come with a special word and song.
I had to rescue myself. There is the candle. We got them all up here now. Good. Well, this morning we are, uh, as we said earlier, we're in First Peter and uh, continuing the 40 days of prayer and in, in the sermon series um, that the Christian Missionary Alliance has uh, used some um, servants of the, of the Lord with the, with the Christian Missionary Alliance and uh, they have uh, formulated some outlines for us to utilize. And uh, this comes from, from Charles Ama. And, uh, and with the Christian Missionary Alliance um, as far as some thoughts for an outline uh, for this message. Uh, there are copies of daily devotionals uh, for the 40 Days of Prayer. They're, they are on the back table in the, in the foyer there uh, next to where the bulletins are, usually are. And if you need a copy, you can help yourself to, to those. Uh, and certainly some of you have found your way online and you have discovered that you can receive it in your email, the daily devotions, and so um, that's, that resource is available to you as well. So help yourself to all that that's available online and those, of course, that are out there in the foyer. The key verse for this morning is uh, 1 Peter 2.10, in which says this, Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Would you bow your heads with me in prayer and hearts? Father, as we look at this uh, particular passage today, and Lord, as those uh, verses that were also shared, Lord, from the Old Testament, Lord, I pray, God, that you will direct our hearts, Lord, to your word. Lord, that we will find, Father, truth, that we'll understand, Lord, that you have acted by your love and your mercy towards us. And providing, Lord, a means to be saved. That we, Lord, are yours. And uh, as we have taken um, that step of faith and asking Christ to come into our hearts and into our lives, Father, we, we find, Lord, that we are yours. And so, God, we pray that you will move on our hearts. That your spirit will fall fresh upon us. Help us to realize who we we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the man whole, the whole main idea is this that you are his now because of Jesus and his work upon the cross. So that's the main thought. Because in this passage we learned once you were not a people, and that's the first point to this message this morning. Because we were not a people. Before Christ, your sin disqualified you from belonging to the family of God. Um, my son, one of my sons, my oldest son, when he was in uh, high school, uh, participated in Science Olympiad. Some of you know what that is with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And it's where our young people, it's in high school, they get to participate against other um, students uh, across the state and they have regional um, um, different regional things that they do. My son was big into this, uh, this, this car he made that was not battery operated, but it was kind of like a wind-up toy. And he had to calibrate his car to go so many feet. If the, if the competition said it only needed to go, they did meters, and I don't understand meters. So anyway, if they said it had to go six feet, they, he had to calibrate it so it would go six feet only. And it didn't, didn't really matter the speed in doing that. What mattered that it was calibrated so it can just go six feet and that's it, no further. 
And so um, he was pretty good at that. I think he took second regionally, so that qualified him to go to states. And uh, I don't know where he placed in the states, but it was fun. He really enjoyed that. It gave him uh, a lot of motivation. In fact, the school superintendent at Clarion School, school District was just amazed that he spent so many hours after school trying to calibrate this car going down the hallway. And uh, hours on end he spent on this silly car. One thing I learned when I went to the competition with him, there was a chance that they can be DQ'd from the competition. And if there's one thing that he didn't want to happen to him is that he would get a DQ. And he saw a lot of his peers get DQ'd. He did not qualify because something might just be off in that little car. Such was the case even with the catapult systems, right? They could have been DQ'd from the participation. I wrestled some in high school and I, I, in junior high, and I learned if, boy, if you were overweight a little bit, you were de disqualified from wrestling in a tournament for the day. Or if there was something else wrong. Back in our day, you couldn't have long hair. I think they gave that up, didn't they? You can have long hair, especially when uh, the girl wrestlers, right? You couldn't have, you couldn't have long hair. Uh, you had to have it pretty short. It couldn't be on your collar. It had to be cut, trimmed up pretty good. I don't think they even allowed facial hair. And I think they allow facial hair, don't they? Do they? You guys are shaking their head. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> and so um, back in the day, that, that would disqualify you. Weight was the main thing. Because if you didn't make weight, you were DQ'd. You know, sin in our lives separates us from God. In a sense, it's like being DQ'd. You're not a child of God if you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never come to that place where you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sin and come into your life. So, like a situation that we're going to read in, um, in the story of Hosea and Gomer. I could never understand this story. You might say, well, why not, Pastor? Uh, it, it's kind of a weird story to me, and I don't know why. I want you to turn to the book of Hosea. Um, it follows Daniel there in the Old Testament. Did they put it on the screen? There it is. Before we read Hosea um, 1 8, I want to read Hosea in verse 2. It says, When the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, Go take to yourself an adulterous wife and children of, an, of unfaithfulness, because the land is guilty of the vilest adultery in parting from the Lord. So he, he married Gomer, daughter of Dibalim, and she conceived and bore him a son. I, and that's what troubles me in this, this passage, passage in the story of um, Hosea and Gomer. Why would the Lord tell uh, Hosea to marry Gomer? Um, and uh, you would think that he would marry somebody like a Sarah or something that was pure and a virgin and, and one that would raise up this nation and... And, but yet he told her, told him to go ahead and marry, um, to, to marry Gomer. In verse, in verse uh, one eight, it says, after she weaned Loman, Lo Rahman, Gomer had another son, and then the Lord said, call him Lo Amah. 
for you are not my people, and I am not your God. For some reason, what Hosea had done was wrong, and it was sin. The first child was fine. The second child was not. And so the Lord uh, said that child's name, Lo Amon, would, it, which means you are not my people and I am not your God. Interesting enough, though, by chapter 2, Hosea 2.23, we read this. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called. Not my loved one. I will say to those called, not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. God extends his mercy to the one that he first says, you're not mine. And now he's saying, you are. God extends his love and his mercy um, in Romans chapter 9, verse 25, there it is on the screen. I'm going to read it from there. It says, as he says in Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people, and I will call her my loved, my loved one who is not my loved one. And it's interesting to see that they, the, the changing of mercy to that word love. Here's just a note that is made about that. In 1 Peter 2.10, some translations will replace mercy with love. This is because Romans 9.25, Paul uses love, agapio, to emphasize the loving and compassionate meaning of the Hebrew root word when he quotes Hosea's prophecy. So there's an interchange. Mercy and love is used interchangeably there. You also have to keep in mind is that Israel's sin and her unfaithfulness led a separation uh, between God and Israel. There's a huge separation there. You see, it's just like us. Our sin also separates us from God until we have faith in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. We remain a people without God. Sin separates us. Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We all have sinned. My second point this morning in the text, in our uh, passage today, once you received none of God's mercy. Once you received none of God's mercy. See, before Christ, you received no mercy or compassion from God, but you were accountable for your own sin and for your own judgment. We re learned that from Romans 6.23. Did I have that on there? No. And I think you're familiar with Romans 6.23. If you have a Bible, so you can turn there with me. I don't hear very many pages this morning. Sometimes we become very dependent on the screen. <laughs> and uh, it's good to have the Word of God in your hands. So Romans 6.23 says, I like to read it right from the text. I know it's a very familiar passage. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So sin, the penalty of sin is death, but the free gift that God offers is what? Eternal life. It's interesting that God withheld showing his mercy and continued compassion to Gomer's son 
because Gomer's sin and, and unfaithfulness. See, Israel's sin and unfaithfulness led to God withholding an expression of his love towards Israel. But he showed love to the people of Judah because they began to turn to him. If, back in Hosea 1.7, it speaks how the people started coming back to, to God. And so God acknowledged that. They returned to him. Our sin keeps us from experiencing that full expression of God's mercy and, and, and continued compassion in our lives. So it, it's interesting that last night that Eric, as he was sharing, he, he had, a, he had a, um, a, a bullet up here and um, and he talked about being complete. That bullet, without the proper charge, without the, the powder in it, uh, and especially the powder, if that powder is not in that bullet, it's, it's nothing. It won't work for you. And uh, he explained that in a different way, and I appreciate his illustration as he was sharing that. That was an incomplete bullet. You have to have the gunpowder in that bullet. Otherwise, it's useless. You know, in our lives, we're incomplete without Christ. Without him in our hearts and into our lives. Without the forgiveness of our sins. And the only way you can have the forgiveness of your sins is if you bow your knee and bow your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe by faith that Christ is the one that saves you. He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can remove your sin. And you need to come to that place and confess that, uh, that you, you are a sinner and ask Christ to forgive you of your sin. So our sin keeps us from experiences, experiencing the full expression of God's mercy and continued compassion in our lives, even as believers in Christ. When we sin against God, there becomes this, this gulf there. There comes this point of separation from God. So it's so important as we live for Christ that we keep the record clean by laying it out to the Lord and being open to the Holy Spirit in our lives to remind us of those things that we do wrong that are not like Christ. Third point, in Christ Jesus, now you are the people of God and have received his mercy. So for a person who puts his faith in Jesus' his shed blood on the cross has been made right with God and now has been and brought from the darkness the darkness of sin, and into the wonderful light. These ones have made that transition from being in the darkness of sin and now have come into the light. And many of you have made that decision for the Lord. In Romans 3.23, um, and down through, through uh, Romans 3.26, we read these words. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified freely by, the, by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented him as a sacrifice of atonement for, uh, through faith in his blood. He did this to dis demonstrate his justice because in his forbearance he had left the sins committed beforehand unpunished. And the verse 26 says this, he did it to demonstrate his justice at the present time so as to be just and the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. So you're no longer condemned by God if you put your faith and his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 1. There's another particular passage I'd like to draw your attention to. Now, 
Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the, the, law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. What law are you living under? Are you living under the law of sin and death? Or are you living under the law of the Spirit? So if you are set free from the law of sin, you are no longer separated from God's mercy and continued compassion because of your sin. Over in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 through 7. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ. Even when we were dead in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And then verse, uh, verses 6 and 7 says, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in the kindness to us in Christ Jesus. We are a chosen people, his kingdom priests, his holy nation, his very own possession. We read that earlier in there in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 10, uh, 9 and 10. Um, and verse 9, it says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are his. And as a child of God, we are, to, uh, we are to live for him as a child of God. You are his now. Listen to this verse. In John chapter 1, verse 12. John chapter 1, verse 12 says this. Yet to all who have received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Romans 8, 16 says this, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are his, a child of God. You belong to him. And the Holy Spirit is the one that continues to remind you whose you are. And 1 John, I love 1 John, the whole book, Right? Um, 1 John chapter um, 3, no, chapter 2, 228. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. I want to stop there and think about that a little bit. A little bit. Would you sit there for a second? How would you feel if you're caught in sin when Jesus Christ comes? You'd be pretty embarrassed. You'd be ashamed. That's why John is talking about that. We don't want to be ashamed. That we would have this confidence. I'm a child of God. Verse 29 says this, If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. Now in chapter 3 he says, How great is the love of the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And, that's, and that is what we are. 
The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear children, dear friends, they, he says, now we are children of God. And what we will be has not been yet been made known, meaning in its full fullness yet, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for well, we, we shall see him as he is. Everyone, verse 3 says, who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. My friends, you're a child of God. You are his. And it calls us to live a life that is set apart for him and for his honor and glory and to continue to grow. And we're not yet perfect, right? We can't claim that we're perfect. But the perfect one is coming. And when he comes and when we see him and when he takes us up to be, up, be with him in glory, all things will be made perfect. We'll be like him in glory. But while we live in this world today, we are to live with confidence and un, being unashamed. Great confidence that we are a child of God. You can take pride in who you are. You're his. You belong to God. You're his child. So I'm really talking pretty strong here and loudly because I think Christians really need to know this. We can't have one foot in the world and one foot in the slop. Or both, that's both feet in the slop, isn't it? One world in the slop, but yet one world walking with God. It doesn't work that way. Always walk with God if you're a believer in Jesus Christ. If you haven't come to that place in your life yet and you're living under the law of sin, and you have for years and you've known it, tell me when are you going to accept God's plan for your life? Don't wait until it's too late. Don't keep on saying that I'm going to wait until I'm on my deathbed to make that decision. Make, make one of those foxhole prayers. Jesus, now save me. I know I'm going to die. It doesn't work that way. Nobody knows when your life is going to be snuffed out from this world, except for God. And he gives you that opportunity today to make that decision to follow Jesus. I hope this morning, if you haven't never made that decision, that you'll make it today. Tomorrow might be too late. An hour after you leave here might be too late. One second after you leave here today might be too late. Where are you going to spend eternity? In hell? Or in heaven? Is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Is it there? Is it there? I hope it is. Would you bow with me in prayer? Father, I thank you for the fact that Many in this room, Lord, know that they are a child of God. Father, they've made that decision to come to that place where they ask you to forgive them of their sin and ask Jesus Christ to come in, into their hearts. They believe by faith that Jesus lived here on this earth, died on the cross for their sin, and they believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the grave. And Lord, they anticipate his coming any moment and any second. They know, Lord, that they are yours. On the other hand, Father, there are some that are still on the fence, and they've never asked you to come into their hearts. They haven't believed by faith yet. They're having a hard time with that. It's a tough decision. Yet it's a simple decision. It's black and white in your word, Lord. And I just pray, God, that 
you would speak to the hearts today that have never made that decision to become a child of God. Perhaps they've sat here for months and years and never made that decision. Lord, would you move upon their hearts this morning by your spirit and help them to take that first step. First in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to um, stand, please, and we're going to close in prayer. It's uh, hymn number 332, and it's uh, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus, I believe. 332. jacket is a different translation in which it says once you had no identity as a people now you are God's people once you received no mercy now you have received God's mercy our Father God we thank you Lord for whose we are for yours Father and I pray, Lord, your blessings upon each and every one, Lord, as we go different ways today and then this week. I pray, God, that you will bless each and every one. 
Help them to be bold in their faith. Help them not to be ashamed, Father. Help them to be confident of whose they are. They're yours, Father. May you work upon each heart, Lord, as we continue to grow in you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.